Let me start by saying, working out makes you so not funny. All you think about is eating and hunger, and I can never really focus on the thing I'm supposed to do in front of me because I'm just thinking about food. I'm thinking about my body. Pure narcissism. I'm hungry. My body, I want to make it better. I want to make my body sexy. I want my body to... If you work out, your parents didn't love you. That's what I'm saying. Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we got... I don't, I don't really know how I would describe this video. I, what I can describe is how I got here. Because, as some of you know, I am one of the adults that has eczema. If you don't know what eczema is, you're basically, you're just a reptile. That's all it is. You shed, you have a layer of skin that's always coming off. You're basically a snake. Now, real quick, as someone with eczema, uh, I know the importance of taking care of your skin. So does Rory and Roman, uh, the sponsor of today's video. Taking care of your skin is important, whether it's dullness, redness, fine lines, breakouts, whatever it is, it's hard to find treatment, especially now. But Rory and Roman wants to make that simple for you. Roman covers the guys, Rory covers the girls, and their whole aim is to get you customized prescription skincare in the most convenient way possible. It's easy, you just grab your phone or complete an online consultation and you'll hear back from a doctor within 24 hours. And if it's appropriate, a US licensed physician will prescribe you a custom treatment that will arrive to you in just two days with free shipping. If you're interested, there's an offer right now where you can get your first skincare treatment for just $5. So that's a $75 value for just five uh, by clicking the link in the description. Again, it's free to chat with the doctor and your first order is just $5. Um, if this speaks to you, click the link in the description and take advantage of the offer. Eligibility requirements and additional terms may apply. So because YouTube has been around for like 15 years and there's literally a video for everything, I was thinking to myself, there has to be some reality show where kids got bullied for eczema. Weirdly, I didn't find anything, but what I did land on was this YouTube channel for a show called The Doctors, uh, which is just a spinoff of Dr. Phil and Dr. Oz, stuff like that. Uh, you might be familiar with their online hits such as Woman's 20-Year-Old Cyst finally gets popped. Uh, that's five years old though, but granted it did have 41 million views, which is pretty crazy. Or you might be familiar with some of their more recent work, you know, Aaron Carter opens up about his sexuality, or even their latest, which I find very interesting. Will COVID send gender equality back to the 1950s? Which is exactly the kind of thing I'm looking for on a, on a medical talk show. Before I say anything about this channel, you need to be familiar with their editing style. Let me just show you, all right? People are now having sex gatherings in clubs. Sex parties during a pandemic? Social distancing has increased people's desire for physical intimacy now more than ever. But are sex parties really happening amid coronavirus lockdowns? <laughs> Daytime television has not changed their editing style since the beginning. I, I have to respect it. To use flaming letters like that in 2021 is sick. I think what I love most about that editing style is it's so insensitive. If you take any of their other videos and you just picture them introducing a subject in that tone, it's... <laughs> this woman has had a cyst for 20 years and finally, she'll get to pop it. Watch this woman bust that nasty pussy cyst off the top of her head. Watch today as she busts it wide open here on The Doctors. They also do this segment called Your Daily Power Prescription, which is, you know, super helpful for any medical issues you may have or... Three warning signs from our cult expert, Rachel Bernstein, that you need to be aware of. The first warning sign is rampant deception within the group. <laughs> To me, it's pretty obvious who this is geared at, right? You know, people who don't use the internet, old people in nursing homes that nobody wants to talk to anymore. Something to just feed into their brain and stimulate them. Honestly, there's a lot of gold on this channel, so I think I just want to browse through a couple of videos, see how far we can get. Uh, why don't we start with sex parties during a pandemic? <clears throat> people are now having sex gatherings in clubs. <laughs> Sex parties during a pandemic? Social distancing has increased people's desire for physical <laughs> intimacy now more than ever. But are sex parties really happening amid coronavirus lockdowns? A New York City members only sex club called NSFW. I'm not about to make a big deal out of typefaces because I think that's the weakest thing you could go after. But this Rainforest Cafe font is, it just screams, they don't give a f 
They're just using what came with the computer and that's all they're ever gonna use. According to the club's website, the app- <laughs> Yo, <laughs> how did I just fucking completely miss this keyboard? I guarantee you, if we comb through this whole channel, we'll find them using this same stock footage of a computer. What computer looks like this at all? <laughs> It looks like a fucking vanity mirror or something. It doesn't even look like a computer. Rolled out an assortment of rules and regulations to have sex in the safest way possible by figuring out creative ways. <laughs> yeah, I want that. This is how you know I have the maturity of a 12 year old and you know I didn't do shit in school because this guy is like going on about this long point like this is what's happening inside the club. And only thing I noticed is the sex in progress device. And I want that every time I go stream. I just want to tap that. <laughs> Stay out of my room, babe. Joining us is the founder and owner of the NSFW Sex Club, Daniel Saint. Daniel, thanks for joining us. So Daniel, a lot of people watching the show right now have not heard of sex parties, don't understand them. <laughs> they also haven't taken their afternoon medicine, so I don't know if they'll be awake for this whole interview, but we're gonna do our best. So in so many words, tell the people at home and their nursing homes, what is a sex club? So I would say like our parties aren't necessarily sex parties, but instead, you know, parties where sex can happen. Um, Damn. <laughs> he said, hey, hey, man, we have ugly people come to this club, too. Don't don't assume that everybody gets nailed, all right? Some people just get to watch. It feels communal. You have a community of people who've been here now for five years. You have individuals who are new. Also, I love this bondage chain mail thing this dude has. He had to let everybody know. I do some freaky ass shit. Help people feel more comfortable with sex. I would say, like, for our experience... <laughs> the host is just squirming, man. <laughs> He wants to jump in so bad. He's sitting there like, nope, nope, nope. I'll let him finish this sentence. What do you, it's all right. I hear what he's saying. You know, I'm, I'm sure it's well-intentioned and it's like a well-oiled machine, but I really wish Daniel would have just came out into the interview and been like, yeah, man, basically we rented this, you know, spot in Soho house and everybody just, uh, just going at it. Yeah. It's just people in there, man. For our experience versus other experiences, you know, we have a digital community. So you meet people before you come here. We have, you know, WhatsApp chats and discords and various channels. He said discords. Now I'm not judging, but you said discords. We know exactly what kind of furry, foxy people showing up to this club. We know, we know Daniel. Lately with uh, everything that's happened with COVID, we've gone down from having 100 guests to having only 16 to 20 in the house. Uh, we have about 3,000 square feet in New York, so it gives a lot of space for social distancing. All right, 16 to 20 and 3,000 square feet. <sighs> Boy. Yeah, that's that's not the same, man. When I hear 16 to 20 and 3,000 square feet, I, I feel for these performers. As someone who has done his fair share of open mics in front of nobody, I can only imagine that type of performance in front of 10 people that's demoralizing. Just sitting there going at it, trying to hype up the crowd. Come on, come on. Oh my God, fucking in a sex club, but you got the personality of open mic comedian. Come on, I know you guys like sex. Yeah. Yeah, make some noise. Make some noise for that. My fellow sex havers. When people come to the club, there is the option to have sex with others. Is it out in the open? Because you... The image that comes to mind is there's a big orgy, there's a big room, people are just having sex all over the place, or their private rooms. Kind of give us the lay of the land. Yeah. So. Get into the real questions. What's going on, man? What, what are we talking about? We must be in here. People tend to wear lingerie and feel comfortable walking around, um, you know, either naked or in something that they feel sexy in. Um, yeah, like something with a tail. And all right, all right, I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. Uh, then there is a larger space. We used to have. A mega bed, which was like a six bed. <laughs> we had a mega bed where people would get on and just fuck the shit out of each other. People get their brains fucked out. Just I'm dying because the host, he smiled in that way, which is like, yeah, but he realized he was on TV, so he tried to pull it back in. He was like, ah, yeah, mega bed. Well, Daniel, thank you for uh, explaining it to us. And uh, hey, 
we wish you luck. And uh, <laughs> hey, thank you very much, Dan. Nice talking to you. Oh, man. Oh, I'm just thinking about all the stay at home orders and stuff like that and people getting really upset. Just all the Karen videos, but in the context of a sex club, dude walks in and full gimp suit and got a ball gag in his mouth. And they're like, sir, you have to put your mask on. He's like, I don't want to put my mask on. I'm paying for it for a reason. I just want to go use it. And they're like, sir, mask, please. And he's like, oh, this is fucking bullshit. This is bullshit. I pay a membership to come in here and do what I want. <laughs> All right, yes, that's fun. Whatever. The one I really want to get to is this one. The whole, like, gender role equality thing. Uh, I watched a minute of one segment of this. And in so many words, this interview is fucking crazy. A paper released by a multidisciplinary team of scientists predicts damaging social and psychological shifts rattling the nerves of an already ravaged country. They expect gender equality will nosedive and blame the rise of unequal division of household labor and child care responsibilities. While these predictions are largely based in... <laughs> this stock footage was when they only allowed white people to be in stock footage. <laughs> That's how you know this stock footage is old as hell. Hey, this right here is a sample size of the Reddit user base. Look at this shit. The horrible hairlines, thousand yard stare in everybody's eyes. You predict that women will sexualize themselves more post COVID uh, because there's a now a need for them to attract a smaller number of attractive men, not just physically attractive, but men who have stable jobs, who are independent. Yeah. You say women will start sexualizing themselves more. Explain that a little more. So I have um, a colleague um, who has studied this and what she finds is that in neighborhoods or in states or in countries that have more economic inequality, women are posting more sexy selfies online. Uh oh. Um, and so when we have this between- Wait, what? Hasn't that just been a thing though? Like there's only fans, bro. Like, what, what do you mean posting sexy selfies? People post everything. It's, you can go get that right now. When we have this between households differences, we end up with women competing more. We also end up with men competing more. And men compete in ways that tend to um, escalate into violence. So yeah, um, I'm sorry to, to, to bring up yet another thing that, that is not um, fun to th think about happening. But, but that also is something we should have. Right, well, you get well, hey, listen, Dr. Hazelton, you gave us a lot of doom and gloom, but you did give us some nicer pictures on Instagram. So that's that's coming down the <laughs> pipeline. So we have something to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> what a oh my god, man! What a brutal position as a host, bro. Did you follow the tangent that that went on? Yes, my colleague finds that women in states, cities, and she, first of all, she just covered everything. Yes, my colleague is doing a study and she finds that women, um, whether they're in a city or a state or a country, you know, if they're just around, um, they're posting sexier selfies uh, as a way to compete. And you know, even men are competing and men compete in a different way that, you know, sometimes leads to violence. He's just looking at her like, hey, yeah, uh, well, at least people will post sexy stuff, right? This segment is fucking awkward. I did not think that's what was going to happen. So I think we want to see an uptick in therapy as well. And that's a good thing as we are realizing that we're not okay, but I'm hopeful that we're going to be okay. And hope is a good thing. That's right. And I think this is going to be one of those things. It's going to be okay. It's like my man Jeff Goldblum said in the first Jurassic Park, life finds a way. <laughs> <It's good stuff. laughs> uh, that's great. Dr. Isham, we'll leave it there. Uh... <laughs> that fucking finds <laughs> Oh, man. That's him really trying to shut the conversation down. All right. Well, you guys said enough. Um, men are violent. Women are posting sexier pictures let's go ahead and wrap that up what i find frustrating about this channel is that they bring on these experts right and they'll throw out some line like that women are posting sexier selfies because they're trying to compete and men got to compete as well and sometimes they compete in a way that leads to violence and then that's just it there's no explanation they don't elaborate they just put that thought in your head and then it's just like <laughs> next up three signs you're in a cult like 
I'm not even done processing the last thing you just said. It just feels like the whole channel is premised on putting horrible, brutal bits of information in your brain and then just leaving that with you. It's like, there you go. Now it's in your head. Like this. Learn about the addictive supplement known as gas station heroin. This is a three minute segment and I'm gonna venture to say, they say nothing. They just tell you that it exists and everyone around you is taking it and it's taking over your town. It's estimated more than 75% of people in the US take supplements, but the unregulated industry is often riddled with bad actors. Well, our investigative producer, Leslie Marcus, reports on a dangerous supplement that's single-handedly turning people into addicts. Can you imagine hearing that, being the old person that is the majority demographic for this show, just staring at the screen after that 17-second statement? All that shit you take in a day, your little Sunday through Saturday box, you're looking at that thing like... The man on the TV said, there's heroin and... Just take your pill. No, oh, it's just, it might be heroin. This drug is known as gas station heroin. So what makes this pill so incredibly addictive and dangerous? An unapproved drug called TNFTing. More than 30 years ago, TNFTing was- Yo, that shake transition. I love that they just show like random shots of standard medicine you would buy. Like, so now you're just gonna associate Robitussin and medicine that might look like this with heroin now. Good job, guys. One of these supplement capsules is estimated to be dozens of times higher than the amount used to treat Yo, they're really showing a bottle of B12 while discussing heroin? This is ridiculous, dude. That's vitamin D. Come on, man. This is just like, it's irresponsible, guys. Tianeptine gets its highly addictive properties because it's an opioid agonist, meaning it binds to the mu opioid receptor of the brain. Throw in Tianeptine's antidepressant effects, and you have a withdrawal recipe for disaster. I was able to get bottles of TNF teen at stores across the country. I also got it online. Hold on, lady. Was that was that a weed dispensary? What 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 was that? <laughs> Yo, what the fuck is this? Thank you for joining me, Brandon. Now I know you're a recovering TNF teen addict. Can you tell me about how that started for you. I had went through opiate replacement therapy, and so I'd come about 60 days off of it and i just wanted some relief and i was just curious i started going deep into the internet all i found was positive experiences I made them more productive and that cured their anxiety and so i'm like well i'll try i got the relief that i wanted but it was too good of relief how similar do they feel to opioids oh it was every bit as good to me i just didn't know what was ahead of me so let's talk about what was ahead of you. So you're going back to the same gas station, buying up pills. Tell me about that. I would take five pills one time, seven pills, eight pills the next time. I was taking probably six bottles a day. Yeah. You have a bag of all the bottles. Can you show that to me? Oh my gosh. Well, ugh. There's a lot of doom and gloom out there, but uh, hey, at least there's more sexy selfies on the way, right? Oh, okay. Hey, she's playing and I had to switch it up. Yeah, might lose a few, ask me if I give a fuck. 